In this video, I have some random tips for using recolor artwork in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm assuming here that you're not a total beginner with recolor artwork. Uh, and if you're using recolor artwork, these tips are for you. If you're just getting started with recolor artwork, you can search for other videos of mine here on YouTube or check out my learning community at lauracoilcreative.com. So first I'm going to select the art and then let's go in to recolor artwork. And for fun, let's just choose another color group. I've got one right here that's really large and it does, wow, a really interesting transformation. And as I click here, I'm seeing all of these different options. But one thing that I'm noticing is that the black stems are staying black and the white flowers are staying white. So this is one of those settings that I like to tell people to check in with first is, are you recoloring black and white? Because that setting actually is going, going to be affecting everything that you do here on this first panel and everything that you do in generative recolor, but there are no settings on either of these parts of the recolor artwork panel. The only settings for whether you're recoloring black and white are located in advanced options. So I like to tell people just, you know, always check in with this first because this is a setting. And as you can see, when we look at this in the assigned color bars, black and white are not being recolored. And you can make this setting global by just coming up here to the color reduction options dialog and click on this. And what we can see here is that black and white are being preserved. And I believe this is the default setting for Illustrator. So it's good to check in here and make sure you've unchecked white and black if you don't intend to protect them, if you do want them recolored, then click OK. And we can see some colors are being combined on individual rows and that's not what I want. So I definitely want to exit here. I've made the setting that I needed and now I'm going to cancel and exit without recoloring. All right, so I'm back to where I started from, um, but if you notice here, when we go into advanced options, that setting is still just as I set it. So all the recoloring I do from here on until I change it again is going to have black and white recolored. So let's go ahead and I'll start up with the recolor artwork panel again. And now what I wanna do is choose a color group. So I have all of these color groups here currently on my swatches panel and color groups are really, you know, they're part of the ticket to using recolor artwork effectively. Um, and so it's good to create color groups and have them ready to go here on your color panel. And then you'll be able to use them inside of recolor artwork. So I'm going to the color library and I'm going to choose one of my color groups just to demonstrate how this works. So if I choose the seven color butterfly, I have those colors and I can kind of swap them around here by clicking this little randomized button and get some interesting color combinations. And I can look at any of the color groups that I have here. Let's try this one that I see has nine colors in it. And that's kind of a helpful way to actually name your color groups is by the number of colors that you have in them. And I'll show you why. Let's just see if we can find an option here that looks good. Okay, so I kind of like that one. Let's check it out inside of advanced options. So if I come here, what we can see is that this artwork originally, there's the original color palette, has nine colors in it. And I have a group here that also has nine colors in it. So these two things are compatible. If I, for example, choose color group number two, um, then you'll see how Illustrator is automatically kind of putting multiple colors on a single bar in order to make it work. And this is an interesting result. I actually really like this, but it's better sometimes when you have art with more colors in it to have some larger color groups that you can work with here. And I'm just clicking on the randomize button like I was doing on the first panel. Now, when you work over in this advanced options panel, this is the original recolor artwork feature. And as much as I love it, and as much as I need to be able to have, you know, this kind of control over my art, uh, the problem is we don't have a undo, we don't have a backwards and forwards button. So if I find an option that I like, 
I kind of need to go ahead and save it because I'm going to lose it if I, you know, go back and I'm like, wow, what was that option that I had four clicks ago? You can't get it back. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and say, all right, I want to recolor this. So I'm going to click OK and click away. And now at least I can go back into recolor artwork and make edits to this, but I haven't lost that. So that's the big difference between working with the, you know, old advanced options panel and the newer panels is we can't undo there. OK, so I'll reselect this artwork and continue with recoloring. So far, we've been talking about recoloring using the groups that I have currently saved on my swatches panel. Now, let's look at another way of doing this, and that's by using a library. So when you come to this color library menu, you can think of this as, there's so many options here, but there's basically just two options um, aside from none. Your options are to use a color group that you currently have saved on your swatches panel or to use a library. And so we have all of these included libraries in Illustrator. And if you know anything about saving these libraries in Illustrator, it's basically a saved swatches panel. So I could take whatever I have here on my swatches panel and save it as a library. Um, and in that case, it would show up here in user defined. So all of these here are my custom saved libraries. And the reason I want to differentiate, you know, using a library versus using a color group is because a library will have generally a lot more color in it. it all depends on how you saved it in this case like for example if i choose document swatches it's going to like a library going to have all of these colors here included no matter what group they're in so here's an example of how you would use this limiting your colors to a library i'm going to come down here to one of my saved user defined libraries and i've got that them right here. Here I have the Spoonflower color map. And so if I release on this, choose this as the library I want to use, you'll see nothing changes here or very little changes here. But we can see what was a really smooth wheel before is now kind of faceted. And that's a clue to what's happening. That library is so huge. It has lots and lots of colors. This is Spoonflower's matching system, and you can order a color swatch and look up the individual colors on it. So what limiting to a library does is it finds the closest match in that library to the artwork. So for example, if I went to document swatches, you know, in a sense, we're treating this as a library. It's every color here in the document minus, you know, whether they're in a group or not. Um, and I'll get the very, you know, very similar color here because those colors already exist in the in the document swatches. Let's go pick another one. Um, art history, for example, these are all, you know, the included libraries here. So if I go to ancient, we can see that's the library of color swatches, regardless of group that the artwork is being limited to. And it's not a very close match, but that's because there aren't very many colors in here. So I just want you to be aware of what we're doing when we limit to a library versus when we use a color group. They're kind of different features. Let me go back and choose the Spoonflower group because I know a lot of people use this um, Spoonflower color map. And I'm going to go into advanced options so we can see what it looks like on this panel here. So these are my original colors. These are my spoon flower colors and they look, well, they look exactly the same to me. But if I double click on one here, I can see in the color picker here and uh, those are the hex codes. Those are the hex codes from the spoon flower color map. And I can choose from any of these colors here that I wanna use that are on the color map. Of course, if I want to go back to the color picker, I can click on color models and then I have this interface. So you can just go between color swatches and color mo models. I'm going to cancel that um, but because I like, you know, the, the way this is matching here. But look, uh, Spoonflower Color Map 2021, that's the name of that library. And so this is the menu that corresponds to that menu that I showed you on the first panel of recolor artwork, it's right here. So if you want to limit to a library, this is where you can do it here. So now let's make a few changes. And as I said before, 
you have to be a little cautious when you're working in advanced options because we don't have an undo or a back button. We do have reset, but I've come so far here, I don't wanna reset. So let's say I want to find out like what the texture color is. So the texture that's happening in this pattern here is coming from a repeating bitmap TIFF overlay. So I wanna find out where that lives. So I'm gonna click on this magnifying glass icon and I'll click here to see, nope, it's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. Let's see, is it the orange? Yes, okay. So this is where I can make a change here to this color if I need to. So in order to make a change, now that I've discovered where that is, I need to click on this button again to turn that mode off. Now I know that I'm using a multiply blending mode and an opacity setting on this overlay. So I'm gonna try to you know, get an equally dark color here, but maybe I can find something that's a little cooler. Let me desaturate that, darken it up a bit. Okay, so I like that better. Next, I'm not loving this color right here. Oh, and by the way, so if I double click on this, it's already found the closest match in the color map. Um, I don't like this bright violet color here, so I'll double click and change it in the sliders. I think I want something just a little bit more in keeping with the rest of the artwork. Like that, for example. And if I double click on this, we can see there's the hex code for it in the Spoonflower color map. All right, now there are other changes I can make here, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So I'll click OK. And now the artwork is saved and I've got those colors, but let's say I wanna make a color group for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this artwork here and click on the color group folder. And I'll just call this blue burgundy to help me remember that. And I'm going to not turn this into global swatches, but I do want this to take those colors from the selected artwork. I'll click OK, and there's my new color group. Once you have your swatches panel pared down to only the swatches you wanna save as a library, then just come to the Libraries button and choose Save Swatches. This will put it in the correct location on your system so you can retrieve it in the user-defined menu. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed these random recolor artwork tips like how to set your color reduction options to allow black and white to be recolored, different approaches to using save swatches as a group or by limiting to a library, and locating colors in the art with the magnifier in advanced options. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online here on my YouTube channel and on my website at lauracoylecreative.com. And thanks for watching.